So Gary will be talking about a variety of things, uh, about taking good pictures in any light, about protecting yourself, etc. Gary started in photography in 85 uh, out of his parents' house with a couple hundred bucks and one camera. Uh, went on to find, found storybook uh, weddings and became very well known in the wedding industry. Uh, then became an inventor and began inventing some of the things that you see up here. Probably talk a bit more about that. Gary's got a couple books out as well that are very interesting. Uh, the Accidental Millionaire is his first one, and then So You Want to Be a Rockstar Photographer. Uh, both highly recommended books. All right, so with that, I'll turn the time over to you, Gary. <coughs> okay. Auto white balance is pretty good. It's not bad, but it's not smack on, and it can be fooled quite a bit. So what happens is, do you ever like load up a something in your camera and you just kind of go, oh, I don't like the color. Of course you do, that happens all the time because your camera's on auto white balance. And one thing that really, really helps out with your white balance is of course to use flash. Because when you use flash, this flash is a constant color temperature. It doesn't change. And so what this does is if you've got some funky uh, orange thing coming onto a person's face or a blue coming in from a daylight window, the fill flash is going to even all that out and give you one solid center. That's why it's, it, I think it's so imperative for a wedding photographer to shoot flash, uh, fill flash for pretty much everything because it'll, it'll even things out. So under a custom white balance situation, what I do is what this will do is use the spot focus auto data. So do you see there's a little dot kind of in the middle? Could you maybe hold that right about there? Oh, let's go in this direction. Yep. Oh, okay. Let's see. Right there. You see that little circle right there? Could you lower that down until that's... Okay, so what it's doing right now is it wants me to ask what that is. Let me turn my flash off. So, okay, so now it just says, okay, I got it. What the camera just did is it just measured daylight. Now, of course, that exposure is way off because it's, um, it's trying to turn this, this thing into neutral gray. Do you see how that works? That cone is middle gray, but it was in shadow. That's why the rest of you are completely blown out. But that, that dome right there is perfectly exposed. It looks like this at 50%. And 50%, 18% gray is the middle between black and completely white. And so she was in the dark, and that's what that looks like. But now, so I've got it set, and it says register one is now at that. So now from this point on, if I go to function, white balance, yep, yeah, one, this right there is your perfect white balance. And that's, that's the definition. Look at how, you see the red, green, and blues, how everything is not shifted? They almost look like they're exactly the same thing all the way across. So you know what's nice about doing custom white balance is if you're shooting anything, just take one shot with this in this, and then that's fine. But then you know what? When you take the one shot, later you can go to uh, Lightroom, and you can use this. Uh, it's not on the next slide, but we'll, we'll come up to it. You can use this in that photo in Lightroom to put your measurement tool over and then record that change. And you'll find that once you actually do a custom white balance with this, you'll find that your color is so perfect that you don't even need to touch anything. And there's nothing like loading up uh, a whole bunch of images and it looks as if the person's standing right there. I mean, there's no color cast, there's no, it's not blue. Do you ever kind of like go back and forth and say, ooh, now it's too warm, now it's too magenta. I don't know what's wrong, it just doesn't look right. Well, this is going to make it look right. And so what winds up happening is if I'm standing right now, we're in fluorescent light. Fluorescent's really notorious for having different colors. Take a look at them right now. There's some that are green, there's some that are warmer, and they're incredible for being wrong. So when we're in a situation like this, you put that thing on fluorescent, you're gonna have a heck of a time trying to, trying to get a, um, trying to get a, uh, oop, that's me, hang on just a second, mm -hmm. trying to get a good exposure out of that. So that is basically, this is one of the handiest tools you can have. Now, there's a thing called a gray card, which I used to use a lot, and I relied on it heavily. The gray card's fantastic, except for one thing, it's flat. So if I take something flat and aim it at you, if I move the angle just a little bit, do you see how it changes? So what I have to do is I have to make sure that this is uh, parallel to your lens face. And if I go like that, now I've completely changed the color. So when I designed this one at an 18% gray, because it's a sphere, it's the same shape as your face. 
your face is going to capture light from, say, if there's an open window right here, or if there's uh, red light above, or maybe uh, something to the left, it's going to, when you pick that spot, it's going to calculate the average for everything, and this is extremely uh, accurate calibration. Now, the, that's what we call reflective me, uh, measurement. So the light coming in is bouncing off, and we're measuring that. This is called incident measurement. I don't know how many of you really have gone back in the history of photography, but they don't, I don't think they make them anymore. They're called light meters. I, 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 do they even, do they have them? Are they, there are? Really? But have you noticed on the light meters, they have a little circle on them? Yeah, they have a dome on them. Why do you think they would have a dome? To picture, to grab all the, yes. Oh, wow. Okay, great, great. So, okay, awesome. Okay, so let me, it's got, it's got a Band-Aid on it. It's not even, it's not even duct tape. This is like, this is cloth bandage material. But, um, so what happens right here is, whether it's color or exposure, it's a half dome because it's going to picture everything completely around it. What happens is this. When you're, when you're putting a neutral dome on the front of your uh, lens, and I'll just show you a demonstration. So what I do is I put the dome over the lens, but I have to stand next to the subject because I want to measure the light hitting the subject, not on me. You see, you guys are in fluorescent light right now, and I'm in a dark part of the room the light color on me is going to be completely different than it is on you. And so what, what I do is, get this, I turn the camera into an actual, do I have an extra camera here? I turn the camera into a digital measuring device. So what is this now? That is this. How cool is that? So you don't need this anymore. Can I? It's OK. It's okay. Um, <laughs> But now, how do you do this? Well, I'll show you in the slide right here. Okay, so I hold it over the lens, and then I take the custom white balance sample. So it'll ask me, custom white balance, this is on a Canon. This is all, by the way, on my YouTube channel. And then I take that first picture, and you see how that exposure, there's one spike right in the middle? That's middle gray. And that means your exposure is dead on. That means that that little square right there is middle gray. And it's going to ask me, do you want to use the white balance data from this image for custom white balance. And you say, OK. And then you choose that white balance that you just recorded. So what happened is this. This thing said, of all the colors around here, if I switch the filtering to this white balance setting, it will be completely neutral. And that's basically what winds up happening, is you get a completely accurate color. So do you know how to take the perfect photograph? If you want to take one that's exactly the way you saw it with your own eyeballs, color's perfect and the exposure's perfect, all you need to do is go up to your subject. doesn't need to be a person. It can be just a, um, uh, it can be just a uh, you know, still life object. Or if you're a macro photographer, how fun is that? If you're shooting you know, ladybugs or whatever, just kind of go up and then capture. This thing is opaque so that it doesn't see anything except one solid color. So you capture that, and then you can shoot in manual and move your aperture and your shutter speed until you get that spike in the middle of the histogram. That means perfect exposure. Then you set the white balance to this dome, and that means you've got perfect color. 100% perfect color and exposure. That's the only way you can do it. Anything else is guesswork. It's not scientific enough. So that's one of the, that's one of the things that I, I'm really adamant about is color balance. Now here, I'm using the gray dome in Lightroom. So you'll see that I had the model hold the uh, gray, and I'm using the calibration measurement tool to ask that uh, little thing what's neutral. And what it did was it uh, neutralized everything in terms of the color. So whatever color cast it had, and this one, it's, you can't see it on the projector, but we were underneath a tree, and tree and grass, and it was green all over her face. The minute we put that up there, then we locked that in. And what you can do in Lightroom that's really kind of cool is you can then save that preset. So as long as the light doesn't change, you just keep that one image. So say, for example, you're shooting a bunch of family portraits, and you're out in a certain spot. And you just say, ooh, can someone hold this? And you take one picture and you say, thanks, that's all I need. And then you go back and you just shoot, shoot the day away and you've got yourself 
perfectly balanced color.